Hi there. In this video, we will learn how to create domain controller on Windows Server 2019. I have already created a virtual machine and configured as follows. Like I've given the computer name as the inhyd-dc01 and configured a static IP address. For making the domain controller, you need to have a static IP address. It's not recommended to have a DHCP IP. Instead, you need to have the static IP. So I configured the uh, IP address uh, along with the default gateway and DNS server also going to host on the same server. That's what we are going to do it. So for that, uh, the same IP I have given and secondary IP I'm going to configure as my home Wi-Fi router IP so that I get the proper internet. And also, I'm planning to create a domain controller uh, with the name called aumneo.local. So this is going to be a non-routable domain. And later point, I would be adding the my lab required UPN domain names so that uh, I should be able to log in. My users can be login with my username at companyname.com over the internet. Okay, so that being said, uh, once we created the domain controller in the Active Directory Sites and Services, we would also configure the uh, site name as the Hyderabad and we assign the physical subnet ID as class of class C, that's the slash 24 IP series to Active Directory Sites and Services. So, this is the plan. So I'm going to jump into the step-by-step -step instructions how to do this. Before that, just in case if you're quite new to Active Directory, you can always go back to Active Directory basic sites and you can learn. Oh, this is where I have also uh, posted very key concepts about this uh, block specific. Uh, what is domain, what is forest and other key components. You could you know, go with this index or the table of uh, topics and then just in case if you're quite new to the active directory that being said let's jump into the quick demo to create a domain controller and this is a computer which i've already configured and installed with windows 20 so you could see here the windows version windows server 2019 and the host name and the ip config slash all which shows whether the IP address is configured from DHCP or not. So in my case, you could see that very clearly, this is not configured with the DHCP. That means I have configured manually all this configuration. Just in case, if you don't know, you can go to the network connection and configure here the IP address configuration. So, so in my case, this is how I configured. Also, I've added the domain name as this. Okay, and now it's time for us to install the Active Directory roles. Let's begin by opening the server manager and you must have to log in with the administrator account and the account must have, for the security reasons, have a password configured. And click on manage and roles and features and proceed with this uh, wizard until you reach the selecting the roles. Make sure that you selected the proper computer name and select here Active Directory Domain Services as the checkbox and add all dependency roles. And follow the wizard to complete the installation. These are all of the by default steps. After installing the ADDS role, a notification will be appearing within this server manager. And you could you know, click on that notification to promote the server to a domain controller. Since the wizard is uh, completed installing the role, we could close this or you could click here uh, to proceed for the promotion of the server to your domain controller. In my case, I'm actually closing this and you could see here the notification, promote this mission to the domain controller and you can click there. And uh, this is where the Active Directory Domain Services configuration wizard comes up. here. Uh, if you're trying to create uh, for the first time in your company, you can uh, select as the new forest, meaning uh, this would actually give you an option for the creating a new domain uh, if you don't have anything. If you are uh, trying to add a new domain controller to an existing, you could actually choose the add domain controller to the existing. So meaning you might have already a domain controller and you would be you know, promoting there. Uh, by creating a secondary additional domain controller. 
and uh, this is for a new domain to an existing uh, forest uh, it would be comes as a child or tree these are the additional relationship that you need to you know learn as part of the active directory but this video scopes to the first domain controller so we would be you know giving here a domain name or the forest name for the root domain as AUM NEO dot local now this is where the functional levels comes so you can always choose the highest level uh, that your uh, network requires so in my case um, this is the highest level of 2016 I can choose uh, and even the domain functional level also I should be able to choose the highest level and this is where for you need to enter the directory service restoration mode uh, just in case if you're trying to restore AD and then you might need to enter this password so I would be you know entering this and I would be you know documenting this password later point and click on next so make sure that you know if you're trying to install uh, on this machine if you're choosing the domain naming a domain name system that is a DNS server you can install here as a domain server uh, domain name server meaning the DNS server also will be installed on the same computer click on next now we need to specify here NetBIOS name the NetBIOS name is the older naming convention uh, for computers on Windows network so you can you know accept the default or specify custom by a NetBIOS name for compatibility with older systems but most cases um, with these advanced days we would be you know, choosing the default and we would you know simply click on next and now it's time for us to you know choose the uh, path for the database log file as well as a syswall normally in a production uh, these drives would be uh, configure additional drive letters uh, that's where they would be saving it instead of you know C colon windows in a production in my case I'm just going with the lab so I'll simply choose C colon and now it's a time for us to review the configuration and the pre request and then you can you know, click on install so that it will begin the installation of active directory domain services and the server also will be restarted during this process and the later point we would be you know performing the post installation tasks once the server is restarted just in case if you're trying to you know uh, follow the same steps on multiple domains or multiple machines you could you know uh, use the script to perform these steps instead of GUI you should be able to automate with the PowerShell script so I click the next to proceed and then click on install to install with the pre checks click on install as part of the domain control creation it's going to secure and it will be uh, the lot of other partitions and now you see here uh, it's going to restart the computer automatically uh, less than a minute time and we would wait for that and system getting restarted once the system is started you can log in and if you notice here we are actually trying to log in with domain name here which is coming as a AUM neo backslash administrator so let's enter the password now we have successfully created domain controller let's have a couple of you know post installation checks uh, so make sure that the system is already restarted and from the administrative tools you should be able to see active directory specific MMC's and open up let's try to open up one of them like active directory administrative center uh, this is actually useful for managing your users groups and other resources so in my case this is the one uh, which we have uh, connected you can enable here your recycle bin uh, just in case if you deleted any of the objects that goes to the recycle bin later point you should be able to restore them and also you can work with the group policies uh, by opening the group policy management console and he, this is where you can you know create multiple group policies like by default it would be default domain control policy default domain policy so you could uh, configure these policies according to your requirement and also every company will have their business representation with the help of OU structure so you might have to create your own OU structure here so this is a by default structure but you can you know create based on country or maybe business unit name and followed by the regions or it might represent your business uh, logical structure for example in my case uh, I can give you one example like 
country name for example India and the locations I can talk about Hyderabad or maybe I can talk about Bangalore so and every location might have here like servers right you might have even workstations you might have users you might also have need groups and this is how you can actually create your OUs and every OU might have different uh, objects within this for example in the users I might have to create here for example a, a test user example and this test user might be uh, this is a test group actually so let's create as the user so this is a new user or you can right click on this a new user in this case test user enter the password so this is where the users are there. Similarly, you can have your multiple AD groups, for example, all uh, hyphen SCCM servers example. This is the group that I wanted to uh, create. So I can create here a group and later point I would be adding here all the SCCM servers to this group. So this is how you can have a multiple objects here with the help of actor that we use in computers, MMC or Snap-in. Now when it comes to the DNS, you can actually configure DNS here. So by default, the former lookup zone gets created but not the reverse lookup zone. So you can see here, these are the uh, SRV records that are already created uh, with the where is the DC, domain name, GC, PDC emulator, all of that stuff, it has been created. And uh, you can create even reverse lookup zone with your subnets. For example, in my case, I have the subnet called 192.168.31 series. So I would, you know, use this. Uh, I would be, you know, happy to dynamically update only secure records. Uh, let's say if I come back to the former lookup zone and in my domain, I have this computer which is my domain controller. If I want to update the PTR record, I can, you know, simply take this checkbox so that in this uh, if i just refresh a record gets automatically updated as a secure link now when it comes to the uh, active directory sites and services this is uh, one additional important step that you have to perform uh, for active directory sites and services so you can open up active directory sites and services and this is the snap in within this you can uh, have multiple site names so in my case this active directory uh, or the domain controller I have created in Hyderabad location so I would you know rename this location as Hyderabad and the server which is INHYDIFNDC01 is located in this location and the subnet so I need to you know associate with this server a subnet also so I'll just click here create a new subnet called uh, it would be 192.168.31.0 uh, backslash 24 plus C so I can give here select so that if I just go back to this Hyderabad site properties all the computers that are falling on within the subnet can utilize this site uh, for their replication or for their authentication it can easily come back here and they can even retrieve their group policies all of that stuff so that's very important to configure uh, in order to and also you might have you know here the new site configuration for the cost point of view uh, just in case if you have a multiple sites you might have to you know configure different uh, uh, inter-site information but I have only one uh, but you know as you proceed with the active directory training you would you know consider here the site replication uh, and the bandwidth location allocation all of that can be you know configured here so that being said I have actually touched up a very high level for how to create the domain controller and the most important post to the creation would be the sites and services which will be very useful for your SCCM configuration and also make sure that you create your uh, proper structure and within that or use the required objects as a final step let's add one of the workstation to domain controller so in my case i have here windows 10 machine so let's open up the sysdm.cpl which is a system uh, properties and you can see here uh, on my windows 10 machine i have renamed already inhvd hyphen win 10 as a computer name all i have to do is have to click on change and uh, then change the domain to this but make sure that you have a proper dns is already configured on your network card so you can uh, already verify for example in my case i can open up the network and sharing center ethernet and properties 
and you can see here I have already configured the AT address which is my domain controller IP and also I have configured here the domain name so since we have the DNS suffix for this connection and the DNS IP I should be able to join this machine without any problems to domain so I can give here AUM neo.local which is my domain name and enter the domain controllers username and password so in my case I'm entering the user ID password of AUM neo.local domain controller and it says uh, it, it seems to be it's joined that's why it is welcoming click OK and uh, before you do anything you have to restart this computer so let's restart this computer and relock in and post restart you can click on other user and type slash enter the user account that we have created in this domain for example test user and enter the password that should be able to lock in make sure that if you're trying uh, just like me in the Hyper-V uh, the session must be enhanced session the reason uh, not not the enhanced session it should be a basic session the reason being uh, the account which you are trying to lock in is not part of the uh, RDP users so in general if you're trying to connect within the Hyper-V with the enhanced session meaning the user should also have the permissions on the uh, remote uh, desktop connection manager or the RDP permissions on that machine so now we we were able to log into the machine you can find out by typing this set uh, uh, by using this command to where the computer is currently logged in that's how you should be able to configure your domain controller and join the machine to your domain I hope this lecture is useful for you thank you for attending this small session if you like this video please like and subscribe and share with your friends